live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Chaos on the court. Witnesses capturing a fight play out during a basketball game at a local high school. The teen hurt in the incident speaking with us tonight. Several witnesses shared video of the incident. A 47 year old was arrested and is facing charges for allegedly assaulting a 15 year old boy and a basketball coach. That brawl broke out last night at a summer basketball league game at Edison High School. The night team's Patty Santos spoke with the victims just hours after they were released from the hospital. Trash talking at a youth basketball game ended up with flying punches. The dude gets up and he like puts his whole body weight on me and then he puts the phone, he's recording, he puts it in my face. I like smack it out of his hand. A 15 year old Nathan Aguilar says that's when he saw a grown man's fist headed towards him. He hits me right here. I have I'm protecting my face and then my neck. Witnesses say it happened so fast. Cameras captured the scene a few seconds later when his coach Mike Moreno was being attacked by the same suspect. The man identified as 47 year old Pedro Alberto Hernandez Garcia is seen punching Moreno multiple times. It just pisses me off how a man could do this to a, a kid. It's just a basketball game. The San Antonio ISD police report says Garcia and Nathan were getting riled up about the game and it escalated. Garcia said he was, quote, defending himself, but that he was unaware Nathan was a kid. I had my uh, uniform, I think it was a, around my neck with my basketball bag. Aguilar stands at 5'8 and about 185 pounds, but says there was no mistake. He had just finished his game and was sitting with other teammates. The videos you could tell me he's He's bigger than my son, Big, way bigger. The police report says Jim Cameras show Garcia was the instigator. The incident happened at Edison High School and it involved players from Madison High and Stevens High playing in the San Antonio Basketball League, not sanctioned by the district. This is my baby and he has a child playing basketball too, so he should know how a big baby looks. And Nathan suffered a concussion. The coach says he has a black eye too, but is doing fine tonight. Garcia was arrested on two counts of misdemeanor bodily assault. Is he, Tim? A disturbing story. Thank you, Patty. A dead man has resurfaced on social media, and his family says someone is using his identity to try to make money. The night team's Jonathan Cotto with the family's message and ways to protect your deceased loved ones from being victims of fraud. This social media account with over 1,500 followers shows the last post was on June 24th. This picture of Mark Anthony Martinez on June 12th says he's on lunch break. The only problem? Martinez was killed in a seven-vehicle crash in 2016. His father, Tony Martinez, at a loss for words. You know, it's just, just wrong to, to do that to anybody, you know, deceased or alive. You know, but deceased, you know, it's crazy. Desiree Martinez, the victim's sister, says her brother was notorious for sharing his work life on Instagram. The spoof account curated around inviting followers for a chance to make extra cash. We, woke, we both worked for the same credit union, so he worked with some of my old employees, um, and he loved it. So it was all, it was part of his life. He lived there practically, so it was all over his social media, and... It's just sad that somebody saw an opportunity and used it. Family and friends quickly taking to the account with messages. Desiree says she was even blocked. I mean, I kind of just started telling everyone to go to the account to report it. The family who is still mourning the loss of Marcus says the discovery of this account was beyond bizarre and infuriating. They've since reported the scam to the FBI's IC3 website, an internet crime complaint center aimed at tackling internet related criminal activity. And the family's request, quite simple. Delete the account, you know, do better. You know, I'm sure you got to have a heart. SAPD says anyone who believes their deceased loved one is a victim of fraud, you can report it. The FBI advises limiting personal facts, put in an obituary and on social media. They also encourage you to make sure the IRS and all major credit reporting agencies are notified or made aware of your loved one's death to avoid scams. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Jonathan. Right now on KSAT.com, we are learning a San Antonio man has died after a trip to Port Aransas. The father reportedly drowned and his son is still missing tonight. The 47 year old father identified as Richard Allen Morellis Jr. According to a report from the Port Aransas South Jetty, we will continue to bring you updates both on air and online as we learn more on this story. One area of town set to be a focused for city crews tomorrow. The plan is to link people without a home to helpful resources while cleaning up an encampment. The area sits next to a drainage canal along Sir Winston and Blanco Road. District 9 Councilman John Courage says they have a dedicated liaison to connect with people who are living on the streets within the district. That liaison has already been making regular visits to tell them about tomorrow's cleanup and to offer up services. And let's hope that we can deter people from coming back by, again, trying to offer them services or let them know uh, that this isn't a place for them to be camping out. About 50 people with SAPD Parks, Solid Waste, and Department of Human Services, as well as volunteers, will be showing up to clean that area. It will be taking place from 7 a.m. to noon tomorrow. If you have concerns about encampments in your neighborhood, call your city representative. The only problem we did have was communications. We could not get out here. It's a dead spot, which has been a problem out here for, for years. Poor radio communications, the biggest cause for concern for a fire chief responding to a house fire in Fair Oaks Ranch this morning. The night team's Paul, John Paul Barajas went out, back out to the scene to find out what residents had to say about this issue and to find out what Bear County is doing about it. What's now charred debris was once one family's garage. The morning fire caused a frightening scene and an ugly aftermath for this Fair Oaks Ranch neighborhood. But as smoke cleared, another problem remains radio communication. And that's scary and it makes me concerned and we need to do something about it because we need to be able to get to our first responders no matter which responders that may be. It's nerve wracking to think about for those living in the area. Those there to save you having to fly blind during rescue efforts. According to Leon Springs Fire Chief Robert Hardenstein, the spotty radio signal forced firefighters to come out of the burning garage to relay information. They cannot hear you. Most of them come back out. We have to wait for face-to-face uh, -to, -face to find out what, exactly what's going on. This essentially wasting time that can be used to save lives and limit the spread of the flames. Luckily, in this case, the only person home was the son of the family, and he was able to get himself and dogs out, as well as call in the fire. The chief adds damages to the garage and things inside total close to $125,000. It was scary. I'm glad that they got out safe and um, that there wasn't more damage than than happened to their house. Many of the residents we spoke to didn't want to go on camera, but all shared the same message. This problem needs to be fixed. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, and we reached out to Bear County officials about that spotty radio signal. They sent us a statement saying that they're looking into the reported issues of that, as well as a new radio system is already being developed for Bear County, the city of San Antonio, and CPS Energy. Finally, they said they'll give us more details when it becomes available. At the fire marshal's office, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. We want to get you to the three big stories tonight. Rescue operations back up and running again in Surfside, Florida. This after concerns of another collapse paused operations for 15 hours. At least 18 people have died in the condo collapse, and there are 145 people still missing. President Joe Biden visiting the area earlier today to console the victims and thank first responders. The National Institute of Standards and Technology is now starting their own investigation into what caused last week's collapse. Take a look at this video out of California. What was supposed to be a controlled blast turned into be a massive explosion, injuring 17 people. Police in Los Angeles confiscated thousands of pounds of fireworks from a man suspected of selling them out of his home. Officers say only 10 pounds were placed into a specialized truck to detonate the fireworks, but that blast damaged the truck and overturned nearby vehicles. It's not clear why the detonation took place in that neighborhood. Everyone injured is expected to survive. Well, a record number of Texans set to hit the roadways ahead of the 4th of July holiday. Whether they are traveling to the beach or visiting family, AAA is expecting 3.7 million people in Texas to travel, mostly by car or truck. 
Gas prices increased by 12 cents in San Antonio in just the past week. While gas prices are increasing, Texans are paying some of the cheapest prices in the country. If you have plans to stay home, we have a list of firework shows in and around San Antonio listed on our website right now. Still ahead on the night beat, an update on this little San Antonio girl who is battling leukemia. The show of support from her father and how you can help in your own way coming up. Plus a new tribute to the queen of the of the Hano right here in San Antonio. We take a look at some of the items coming up. And the public corruption trial for Michelle Barrientes Vela taking another turn. The question now raised by her lawyer next on the night. Former Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela is set to go to trial in the fall, but now her legal team is raising a question that could change the way the case moves forward. Barrientes Vela is accused of abusing her office and is being represented, being represented by former District Attorney Nico LaHood. He now wants a judge to focus on alleged comments by Robert Vargas, who served as a campaign consultant for current District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. Vargas had left the campaign back in 2018. According to court records, Vargas is accused of telling a potential witness that Judge Vela Meza, quote, better do the right thing in this case or I'll find a Democratic opponent to primary her, end quote. But there's some seem to be objective, credible witnesses that heard it, and so they're going to have to be prepared to testify. Vargas denied making the comments, saying the accusations were politically motivated. The court will need to decide if the comments unduly influenced the case. Barrientes Vela's attorney intends to call Gonzalez to the witness stand. Based on what happens, Gonzalez's office could be disqualified from prosecuting the case. Judge Meza says she still plans to preside over the hearing around these comments, which is scheduled for July 14th. Losing hair can be difficult for a lot of people, but it can be especially difficult for children with cancer. We first told you about three-year-old Amy Markovsky's battle with leukemia in April. Her hair recently started to fall out, so her father stepped up to help her in a special way. Amy was diagnosed with leukemia in January. She recently started losing her hair, so her care team and her parents decided it was time to shave it off. Brandy, Amy's mother, made this TikTok video of the big moment. You can see Amy sitting with her Barbies, who also had their heads shaved. Then you see the hairstylist shave off her dad's hair. But what wasn't captured was Amy's shock and heartbreak after looking in the mirror. Her father decided in that moment he was going to shave off his hair, too. And so I think that's why, you know, it was an easy decision for Ryan to say, you know, Amy has to do something really hard. Um, so I'm going to do something really hard for her also. So just so, just so she doesn't feel like she's alone. And we prepared ourselves our, ourselves as best we could. Um, but, you know, you're never really ready for, you know, your child to go through something so traumatic. Amy is in good spirits now. She's on what's called a vacation from any medicine or chemo treatments to give her body a break. But Amy and patients like her still need people to donate blood. The supply remains critically low. The Markovsky family encourages everyone who can to donate. Not just for Amy, for all those who have cancer and um, all those who have had a traumatic event happen. So many people could use it. Now, there are two blood drives tomorrow and Saturday at Rolling Oaks Mall. Tomorrow, it's from noon to 5 p.m. Saturday, it's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center encourages people to make an appointment. If you can't make either of those days, you can always schedule a donation. You can find more information on our website right now at ksat.com. New tonight, the Hard Rock Cafe here in San Antonio unveiling new Selena Quintanilla memorabilia today. Among the pieces Hard Rock received was a pinstriped suit Selena wore at the restaurant's grand opening back in 1995, where she played with Cheap Trick and the Texas Tornadoes just two months before her death. Well, uh, I had just moved from the New York City Hard Rock, and I'd, I'd not really heard of it. But there was the big commotion of, of her performing. And I thought, you know what, this girl's, she's got it. She can be uh, the Britney Spears Madonna on that level. 
The collection also includes one of Selena's tambourines and a piece of stage floor that she performed on. Turning now to our weather, let's take a live look outside with live cam. Beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio right now as we sit at 83 degrees. Yeah, not too hot outside today because uh, temperatures were really right near average, right? just a degree shy of the average high temperature. We'll get to that in a moment. I want to talk about rain chances as well, because you know, tomorrow's going to be mainly dry, just like today. One or two very, very isolated or rogue pop up showers. Only about 10% of South Texas getting uh, covered with that. Weekend afternoon rain chances are higher, including the 4th of July. We'll talk about that, but don't panic right now because it's just going to be confined to a certain time of day and then even more unsettled as we get into next week. So let's get right to it right now and take a look at our day today. Not as much activity actually as a whole across the state. We've got the upper level high, the big blue H, more of a little blue H. Anyway, it's settling overhead and that turned off the tap for the most part with the exception of some locations right along the coastline and then of course panhandling in Oklahoma. This is going to be in charge again tomorrow for us in turn mainly dry. However, it's going to weaken and slide out of here and as it does that it opens up the door for a disturbance. So Saturday, Sunday, we're looking at 40% chances. We're going to get back into the pattern this weekend of just the daily afternoon random pop up downpour. Some neighborhoods could see a quick couple of inches while others have sunshine. Let's talk about these in more detail though. Minimal lightning. So they're the most of them are the type where if you're out in the pool and they hit, you can actually keep playing. Remember, if you hear thunder, that means there's lightning. But if you don't hear any thunder, there's no lightning. You can go on with your uh, day. Not severe and they typically end around sunset. So the 4th of July fireworks that evening should be OK. Next week we get some upper level support. We boost those rain chances up to 60%, so becoming more numerous in nature and not just confined to the afternoon necessarily as we get into next week. I like this pattern. It's good for us. More opportunities for maintenance rain. By the way, Tropical Storm Elsa out in the Atlantic. Max sustained winds around 50 miles per hour, likely to move into the Caribbean as a tropical storm this weekend. Remain a tropical storm early next week, late Monday into early Tuesday, somewhere on or near the Florida Peninsula, even the remnants of, of that likely not even coming close to us. 93 was our high, one degree below average for the day. Right now we're 80 in Bandera, 81 New Braunfels, Stinson at 84 degrees, and Helotus, you're checking in at 83. Still hanging on to 91 though in Del Rio. Tomorrow afternoon, this is what we're expecting. Closer to 100 along the border here. Del Rio, triple digits, Laredo 98, about 94 in San Antonio. You get to Bernie 92. Converse 93 and Elmendorf, a high of 95. A lot of sunshine tomorrow, just that 10% very off chance of a rogue shower. East southeasterly breeze at 5 to 10. And this weekend will be closer to 90, and then we'll even knock off a few more degrees as the pattern likely gets more active into next week. So I like to see this more opportunities for some rain. For sure. Thanks so much, Adam. All right, Larry, the Cowboys were fine for being too physical. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mike McCarthy has often talked about how complex NFL rules are and how that pertains to OTAs. Well, you're not supposed to get that physical in OTAs. The Cowboys did, so they were punished. We got the details and Keldon Johnson made the USA select team a pretty cool honor for that young man coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys were fined $100,000 and head coach Mike McCarthy was fined $50,000 for live contact violations during OTAs per the Star Telegram. They obtained a letter sent by the NFL to the Cowboys detailing the violations from a May 27th practice for basically getting too physical. The NFL did not like the intensity and tempo of the Cowboys' interior line play and pass coverage during 11 on 11 drills where players were clearly engaged in physical contests. The league contends all the physical and excessive contact resulted in players being taken to the ground, per the NFL's letter. The league also reminded the Cowboys that coaches are urged to remove overly enthusiastic players from the field for individual instruction as part of OTA rules. The Cowboys will be forced to forfeit one OTA practice during the first week of them next offseason. Now, two other teams are fined for OTA violations per ESPN. The 49ers were fined $100,000 and head coach Kyle Shanahan $50K. The Jaguars were fined two hundred dollars while head coach Urban Meyer will pony up $100,000. Jacksonville will have to forfeit two OTA practices during the first week next off season. 
And the NFL fined the Washington football team $10 million following the conclusion of the investigation of sexual misconduct within the organization. Team owner Dan Snyder will hand over day-to-day -day operations to his wife, Tanya Snyder, who was recently named co-CEO, while Dan will focus on a new stadium plan and other matters per the NFL. The fine is the largest the league has ever handed down as a form of punishment to any NFL team or individual. The money will be used to support organizations committed to character education, anti-bullying, healthy relationships, and related topics, the league said. How about this? Spurs forward Keldon Johnson is ready to help Team USA get ready for the summer games later this month. Today, Johnson was named to the 2021 USA Men's Select Team that will train with the USA Basketball Men's National Team during its Las Vegas training camp next week. Johnson will face some of the NBA's top talent, and he says he's ready to get after them. I'll go at him. You know, I mean, I've been going at him all year. You know, this is the same thing. I, not going to look at it as, I mean, this, <laughs> I mean, it's basketball. Like, I got to go at him. That's, that's just who I am. Keldon will face Greg Popovich and says it'll be a little weird to play against his coach. Last week, we talked with former Spur Antonio Daniels, who said Pop will be great for Team USA. It's a new voice, and if there's any coach that understands adjusting, you know, he has won different championships in three different decades with different rules and different personnel and different roster construction. So he understands how to take the pieces of the puzzle and put those pieces together for a successful product. Team USA will train July 6th through the 9th in Las Vegas. Miami Heat head coach Eric Sposter will head up the select team. In the Eastern Conference Finals tonight, the Bucks take it 123 to 112 and now lead the series three games to two. Stars Trey Young and Giannis Adenokounmpo did not play. Alma Heights has one of the top QBs in the area, and it's Bobby Bonilla Day after the break. Alma Heights quarterback James Sobey is looking to have a great senior season. He's got big goals for the Mules and for himself. Last season, he passed for 844 yards with five touchdowns, and he rushed for 497 yards with six TDs with a long of 77 yards. He's a dual threat QB for sure. He was also named Code District Offensive Most Valuable Player. Sobey's going through the summer grind with the help of QB coach Yale Vinoy, which he knows will pay off this season when leading the Mules' offensive attack. My summer's been really good so far. I've been going really hard in the weight room and a bunch of speed trainers. And then coming out here two or three times a week has been really helpful for my throwing and for my receiver that I bring with me. Alamo Heights won 7-3 and three overall last season, advancing to the second round of the playoffs. They won District 15-5A2, going a perfect 5-0, and oh, and that's not easy because that district is loaded with great teams. Sobe wants to have a big season and help the Mules repeat as district champs. It's really important. Last season, I didn't have the season that I wanted to. Had a couple injuries, and then our offense just wasn't where it needed to be. But this year, I think we're going to come back super strong and ready to go. Dave Campbell's Texas football predicts Alamo Heights will finish second in district this season behind Bernie Champion. Today's July 1st, and that means it's Bobby Bonilla Day. The New York Mets will pay Bonilla another installment of $1.19 million today as part of his 2000 buyout from the club. He hasn't played in the major since 2001, but he will be paid through 2035 when he'll be 72 years of age, a contract that probably makes us all jealous. Best deal in sports. Absolutely. Unless you're the Mets. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> you got it. Well, check this out. An effort to get more people outdoors is offering an opportunity to win big. It is all part of a treasure hunt in the Santa Cruz, California woods. Every Thursday, an Instagram account will post clues that can point treasure hunters to where two men have hid $1,000. The Instagram account is called the official treasure hunt. That does it for the night, Pete. Don't forget, good morning. San Antonio starts tomorrow at 4.30. Good night.